Now we are going to take a look at the damage energy model applied to two vehicle collisions. Okay, so uh, FICOL presents the expressions like this that have been, work, have been worked out considering the energy of each energy loss of each vehicle and the weight also. And there is expressions uh, for the uh, change of velocity. Okay, so I will refer you to that reference if you want to know more a little uh, more about this. Um, here's the paper also that where you can see ASAE seventy five zero eight nine eight nine three. So. Closing speed meaning the velocity prior to the collision. In this case, collinear low speed collision. Okay. This is the other car. You see, uh, you, you don't see any noticeable damage in there. Uh, the most you can see a scratch. But uh, in this case, this is a plot that comes from the EDR. The EDR has the, the ability to record these events. Um, they are classified in two ways. Some are deployable events, and, though, and you may have an event, but it's not deployment. So depending on the speed and the Inter force interchange between the two, the EDR makes a decision whether to deploy the airbags or not. So this is a longitudinal crash pulse. And you can see an, a miles per hour. So, so you can see the, the table here that comes from the EDR, and that way it can help us analyze this um, delta V that we're looking for. So research revealed the following stiffness values for the Toyota. So you have B0 and B, B, and A, or so. Weight of the Toyota, 3,000 pounds. Weight of the Audi, 3,900 pounds. Vehicle overlap is 50%. That's 50% is what overlaps the, with respect to the axis of the tires. There was no real test. Um, so you use class values, meaning for that particular vehicle, I'm gonna use those numbers as properties. So, here is a, some calculations of the energy and the force. And you have the zero also. Okay. It's collinear low speed collisions. That's another example. So there, there you go, it's, it's hardly any damage in there. And this, this is, this happens quite often. So the Dodge backed into the stop Toyota while waiting for a traffic light. He probably was too far in, and so he backed 
So he revealed the following values. Okay, V0 and A, V0 and A, and for the Dodge, 4,500 pounds, Toyota 39. Based on the pictures, um, we assume 100% overlap. And so this is revealed unreliable rear stiffness coefficient for the Dodge. We use the class values. So you see there might not be a deployment of the airbag, but the module record the values. Mm -hmm. And you can use this to apply and and do go to your spreadsheet and get the values for delta B. Mm. Okay, let's just uh, look at another issue here. Force balancing. Newton's third law. Do you remember new what Newton's third law stands for? Newton's third law is the action-reaction law. So it says for every action there is a reaction equal and opposite in direction. You know, airplanes and rockets fly based on this law. Because if they if you have propulsion coming out of the of an engine, it accelerates the air and the particles molecule, the air molecules uh, based on the thrust. But that goes is pushed onto air that's still standing still. So the standing steel molecules offer like the ground, may say, so that the rocket could launch or the airplane could fly. It's, it's interesting that the uh, airplanes, rockets, uh, they work on this principle. So it says, whenever a body exerts a force on another body, the second body simultaneously exerts a force on the first body that is the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction. Okay. So if we apply these uh, expressions using, you can see a lot of this is, is in real practice, you you do those measurements, find out the what the cars you have, and then they have tested over and over applying these expressions for the coefficients and for calculating the um, the stiffness coefficients. Okay, for example, this is example number 10. You see this is a test conducted on the NTSA grounds. This NTSA is in Washington. In Washington or Maryland, someplace in there. The other vehicle, a 1993 Cadillac Deville. So here is the measurements of the collision on the crash and you have the measurements of the Grand Cherokee. Okay, so here you have pictures of uh, the damage and the undamaged vehicles prior and before the collision. So there it is. And there's a sequence of pictures in there before and after the collision. And let's see, this is 35 miles an hour. But you see we are even to half of, of the front end of the car. When you see 
um, deformation reaching the windshield that tells you that that's that that accident happened at very high speed so these are the the values for this for the 1993 Cadillac DeVille uh, 1996 che Jeep Cherokee you have the data in here L 60 inches you know the the width and then of course these are the measurements then B A and B Yeah. Okay. So here, here the you may say the organization for this. We use the real test overhead photograph to estimate the Cadillac crash depth. The stiff scales A B values to calculate the following. So you see what he is saying is that. You can estimate the crash depth. You can actually measure it by taking pictures or by measuring with laser or measuring with tape. But the idea is to get the six numbers. That is what the magic number is. So, average crash depth 16 inches above the bumper line. Force. 57,000 pounds. Associated energy, then EVS 19.7 miles an hour. And then use of the force from the Cadillac to calculate the adjusted AV values for the Jeep. Mm -hmm. So that the force is balanced. So means that the momentum, you know, the momentum as well as the force would have to be equal and opposite in direction. So the product mass times velocity. So because of the conservation of momentum, if you have big mass, low velocity with another car that has a small mass, high velocity, um, we have to equate this, you know. It's 35 miles an hour. If we go and apply this, we will obtain the, um, the values here. You can see one is 16, no, 19 miles an hour. Based on the, on the crash energy. So here is a little bit more um, expanded, you know, A and B for the Cadillac and the Jeep. And here would be the, the calculations. And this you can see, uh, you conclude that this, this thing was going at 36 miles an hour, but they were saying 35 mile an hour test. But I mean, you could see that from the damage, you could say, yeah, you were going at that speed. Now, this is important about the, uh, the collision force moment arm with respect to the center of mass. Because in, remember in those narrow offset collisions that we saw, the vehicle doesn't keep going in a straight line, it goes, sideways and it rotates. Why does it rotate? It rotates because of this effect that I that you see on this picture. There is a um, line of action of the PDOF that is offset of the center of mass of the car and uh, produces a rotating arm. And that is uh, 
yeah, produces a rotating arm and produces the um, the vehicle will rotate. So these are the the um, you can estimate the 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 direction of the delta v using the values that you have and determine that if this is the pdo meaning principal direction of force has uh, an arm with respect to the center of mass This uh, some of the expressions consider the radius of gyration or moment of inertia of the body depending on what is available. Um, you can you can use these values, or you could estimate also the radius of gyration um, as you know with this guidance. So let's take a look at a different example in here. This is the broadside collision. Yeah. And you have for the 250, 6,000 pounds per car. These are data from the EDR. That's what it says deployment data for a circle. Uh, and look at this. This this is a crash, side crash. And these are the data taken for each vehicle. So the, what you have is in this case, we have good stiffness values for both vehicles. We need to calculate the force and associated energy for the Honda. Um, if you have the force, uh, 23 degrees, the associated energy, and an EBS of 22. And this other one, EBS equivalent buried speed, okay? And you have this average, the force is 122,000 as opposed to 124. And then the energy, 85,543 foot pounds. EBS conclusion, 20 miles an hour. Now you can use the same values of the spreadsheet. I mean, the same, just you see those values in the spreadsheet and complete the calculation. These are things that it would be uh, nice if uh, you can actually, using that spreadsheet, could verify this. Okay. We're going to stop the, uh, here and this will till next with conservation of momentum.